Good day, Internet. Welcome to Stick Ninjas Devlog episode 13. My name is Andrew Russell. Now, the big news this week is Steam Greenlight, uh, which has just launched. Um, I was hoping to get Stick Ninjas onto Steam Greenlight. Uh, when I was reading their documentation, I was really excited about it because they were apparently going to accept um, concept works and works in progress uh, and so on. Uh, which is Stick Ninjas, because it's still a uh, prototyping stage, so that would have been really cool. Um, and their documentation still says that they're going to accept um, concepts and works in progress and all that, but then in another place of their site, now that they've launched, they say that they actually didn't finish that in time for the launch, which is really quite a disappointment, uh, particularly for me. And also the way the uh, community has ended up operating, they're really quite harsh on games that aren't uh, ready to ready to go. Um, so I decided not to uh, put Stick Ninjas up on Greenlight. And then just this morning, my time zone, um, I heard about um, them introducing a $100 fee or uh, donation uh, to Child's Play, which is a great charity. Um, before you can get your game onto green light. So there's that now, so I'm just kind of like, oh, bummer, maybe I should have put my game up earlier. But, um, oh well. Uh, so, yeah, $100 fee. Um, so I won't be putting my game on green light uh, now, uh, at least for the foreseeable future. Um, as you might know, that I I'm not exactly bringing in much money while I work on this game, so uh, every dollar counts. Um, so I'm not going to be putting my game up on Greenlight unless I know that it's going to actually, you know, be worth it. Uh, which I think it will be once it's um, either Greenlight uh, has a better system for handling games that are works in progress, or uh, my game comes out of the work in progress phase and you can actually sort of pay for it and um, play it. Anyway. So that's green light, and uh, just just within the last hour, I think, uh, while I'm recording this, um, I heard that Dejaban uh, Games have offered to loan one indie developer a hundred dollars, and they're calling on other successful indies to uh, loan the hundred dollars uh, green light fee, um, which is really cool. Uh, you know, hats off to them for that. Um, <laughs> I wish I had a hundred dollars to give to an indie to get on Greenlight, um, like myself. Anyway, <clears throat> anyway, um, so yeah, that's Greenlight. Next thing I want to talk about is productivity. Um, you might remember a couple of episodes ago I was talking about how I was feeling that I was getting really quite bogged down with the um, networking code, uh, you know, I was, I was slowly losing productivity anyway, um, and that I, sh I should go and work on something else, which is the physics, which I've been working on. Um, as you might know, I keep pretty meticulous track of uh, my time. I use a program called Manic Time that uh, can that keeps track of what programs I'm running and documents I have open and so on, so I can go in later and go, well, I was working on Stick Ninjas then, or I was surfing the web aimlessly then, and, you know, I can keep track of how productive I am. Anyway, the point is, a while ago I actually analysed my timing data from around that time when I switched over from the networking uh, to the physics, and I found that my productivity was going down when I was working on the networking stuff, and then when I switched over to the physics stuff, suddenly, poof, my uh, productivity shot up. So now I'm sort of starting to feel the physics, I'm slowly getting bogged down. So I'm not about to uh, stop working on the physics stuff yet, but I can see that in the near future I'll switch again uh, to keep my productivity going high um, and let the physics, you know, bubble up here for a little while. So anyway, let's get on to talking about Stick Ninja's uh, development, uh, seeing as this is the devlog. So first of all, wall jumping. I was working on the uh, wall jumping algorithm um, this week, and I kind of broke it a bit. You see, here's the old wall jumping uh, from the previous week, and you can see that there's uh, these boxes to either side of the player, and these boxes detect walls near the player, and if they're, basically if there's a wall near the player, the player can jump off it, and there's quite a fair bit of leeway um, 
like you don't have to be right up against the wall to jump off it. Anyway, I decided that this wasn't very realistic and that you should in fact hold on to the wall before you jump off it. And so I changed the system, I got rid of these boxes, which also saved some code because now there's less um, code needed to wall detect, which is always good. And it's more realistic and it works, but it feels really uh, not nearly as good. And I think I figured it out why. So in the new system, first of all, you can hit the jump key before you land, but you don't actually jump until the jump is a valid jump. The thing about that is it's not responsive. It's not as good as if you're about near the wall and then jump as soon as you hit the button. And even though you're not actually on the wall and it's, you know, you, you haven't been accurate with your key press and it's not physically accurate, it still feels so much better because the character is uh, reacting immediately you hit that button. So that's what I'm going to, I'm going to bring all that code back um, and, and make it work that other way. And then finally, uh, the most important thing uh, that I've been working on this week is uh, actually networking stuff um, in the physics engine. So basically it's prediction. Um, the way prediction works is the game client predicts what the server's response is going to be to its input and runs that on the client. So again, the client reacts um, instantaneously to key presses, which is extremely important um, for having a good feel. Anyway, so what you can see here is a line and what this line is. First of all, there's two lines. You can see there's a uh, blue line and a green line over the top. So the blue line is just the player's history over a certain amount of time. And then internally what's happening is I'm rewinding, I'm, I'm saving all the positions and all the character states along that blue line. And then I rewind the character to the beginning of the blue line and then I run prediction, um, which is predicting, is it's replaying those inputs on a, effectively on a client. And um, the green line is showing the position history as prediction happens. So one way to think about this is the blue line is happening, uh, it's getting updated one segment at a time uh, each frame whereas the green line is being recalculated, uh, the entire line is being recalculated every single frame um, in order to run prediction. And basically uh, the idea is if prediction is working, these lines will match up exactly, and they do. So I'll roll back to a previous um, version which doesn't do, um, it's really very simplistic the way the uh, character gets replicated, and um, so the prediction is uh, inaccurate. Um, and so you can see here that the uh, two lines are diverging and that's, you know, indicates an error in the prediction algorithm, whereas the uh, the final version obviously works and so it's a lot less exciting <laughs> to uh, look at, I guess. So anyway, um, that basically means that all the physics engine stuff is good to go when it comes time to merge it back into the networking. So as soon as I've finished, you know, making the physics at least reasonable for an initial release, um, I'll go back to the networking and start building it into that, as well as fixing up missiles and um, instant hit weapons and so on that I've left to, you know, think about for a while while I work on the physics. Anyway, that's everything I've got to show you this week. If you'd like to uh, get a notification when Stick Ninjas is available, available for playable pre-order, you can visit stickninjas.com and put your email address in the email address form. And um, if you'd like to hear about more development news, uh, you can subscribe to my blog at andrewrussell.net or you can follow me on Twitter at underscore Andrew Russell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.